So my name is Amelia Sordell and I run a personal branding agency called Clout. And essentially what we do is brand people, not businesses. So we manage social media, we get people speaking gigs, we get the book deals, you know, podcasts, everything in between. But it's all about leveraging your personality to gain a competitive business advantage. Perfect. And I'm sure many of the listeners already know who you are, um, just because there's a lot of overlap between your world and the, the world of my audience. But some of the things people may not know, am I right in saying you, before you made a success of the agency, you sort of went through a lot of ups and downs and like you've, you've lost businesses, you've built businesses back up again, you've had struggles yourself. How did it all come to this moment where you get that success of this business? So tell us a little bit, if you don't mind about those ups and downs before you get to the bit where everyone else sees the success. You know, what's really funny is I don't think we're successful at all. Like really? it always yeah. looks fantastic from the outside in looking in. Right. But actually the reality of running a business is every single day is a roller coaster. Um, a lot of it's firefighting. A lot of it's failing. Um, like I fail at stuff every day, like I, I every day. And sometimes it's huge failures. Sometimes it's smaller failures. But every single day you fail. And I think the more you embrace failure is something not to be avoided but rather a friend like you can't learn how to do something better unless you suck at it first like that's the only way you can move forward um and I'm such a big believer of failing and understanding that failure isn't just an option it's the only option that you have and if you want to succeed and so coming back to your question yeah my first business failed I started a women's wear clothing brand um was really successful in the first two years had funding, um, you know, we were stocked in 12 boutiques, ASOS wanted to stock us, it was, you know, doing amazingly well, influencers were all, well, not influencers, celebrities back then, but back then it was like, that was who you wanted wearing your stuff, all the wags, not the towie people, and all the main Chelsea lot were like, always in our stuff, we always got papped in our stuff, um, and then year two lost everything, and it felt at the time like a death, like I felt like I really grieved that business, because my identity was really closely tied to the validation of being successful outwardly facing like I was back then I didn't really understand what personal branding was I didn't even know it was a thing but I definitely was building a brand for myself both in the business world but and on online of being this like 22 year old and managing director of a business and my identity was so closely tied into that that when it failed I felt like I'd failed yeah. um and I was wasn't good enough and it was it was you know a very humbling experience. I'm very grateful for that experience because that experience then led me to go back into the workforce and, you know, cut my teeth in sales and recruitment. And if I hadn't gone into recruitment, I would never have gathered the skills that I have today in order to run the business that I run now. Um, but that's not to say what you see is a success. Like we are just getting started. And I think it's very easy for people to look at, you know, not just what's online, but like compare themselves to their friends, their family, their, you know, their rich uncle, like whatever it might be and go, fuck, like I wish I could be that person or I wish I could do what they do or I wish I was there. And what they don't see behind the scenes is like, you know, the struggle to find childcare, the clients handing in their notice, the clients, you know, not approving things on time and like, you know, people not paying their invoices on time and cash flow management and having to let people go and hiring people and all of those things that, are required to run a quote unquote profitable business because let's say profit not success because I don't think we're successful but I you know we're profitable yeah. um you don't see those things and so you're comparing apples to oranges and you might be much closer to the reality of what that person's going through than you think um and all it really is about is being unafraid and unapologetic in your constant failure I think it was Winston Churchill that said however you feel about him personally you know the man said that you know, success is going from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. And I have, I go from failure to fuck up to mistake without losing enthusiasm because I know it's those stepping stones that are going to get me to where I want to be long term. I love that. And you mentioned there the identity. I heard you say recently that you you have that boundary of Amelia and Millie, as you said. Um, how, how much, how important is it for you to have that boundary? And with the ups and downs of business like we all know like do you try and separate that so you don't take it on the chin personally like or how, how do you sort of incorporate that boundary setting of business mode versus normal life mode I love this question so much and actually a lot of people I love that you've done the research to get to that because a lot of people don't even know what that means so Millie is what all my friends call me um or me me but mostly Millie is all my friends my family you know people that are close to me call me that and that is like my 
true self. That is my unencumbered, no judgment, no shame. Like this is who I am. And I bring a lot of that online. I think Um, I'm relatively honest, I believe in my approach to things, but I do think we need to recognize that you can't be a hundred percent who you are online or at least you can't give away a hundred percent of who you are online I think you should be authentic I think you should be real I think you should be honest and genuine and vulnerable and those are all the things I believe I am but I don't give all of myself away because I think when you give all of yourself away regardless of how confident you are and regardless of how strong your mental health is you are going to feel depleted because you are giving something away to someone else you're not getting anything um and that is why we see so many people with mental health issues you know social media drives a lot of this perpetuation of you know comparison body dysmorphia like people feeling they're not enough and all of these things it's because we so closely tie the validation of who we are as people to whether or not a stranger online thinks we're pretty or successful or likes our content and when you get into that validation cycle you then never spend the time internally to be like no i am enough and it doesn't really matter whether Steve from wherever thinks I'm cool or Jane likes my picture because I like who I am. But in that, there has to be a strategy that you deploy when you're building your personal brand to understand where that line is. And for some people, there is no line. And that's, you know, that's your choice to make. There are plenty of people that give 100% of who they are on social media and they do so willingly. But for me, it was really important. I separate the two. And so when I talk about Amelia Sordell and Millie, like Millie is who I am and Amelia Sordell is the brand. That is the personal brand. And that is like work me. You know how we all are when we're, when we're at work, right? It yeah. is who we are, but there is like a certain version of ourselves that we bring to work. That is what my brand is. There is a certain version of myself that I bring to that brand. And it's a highlighted, more opinionated, more distilled version of who I am. But it's not everything because if it was everything, I wouldn't have anything for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important that you understand that. Because when you can nail that, social media no longer becomes a source of validation for your personality. It becomes a distribution channel for it. And when you can start seeing it as a distribution channel for your personality, then you start making some serious opportunities happen for you off the back of it. No, that makes sense. And in that you mentioned vulnerability as well. How important is it to to have that sense of vulnerability in in the sense of knowing that, you know what, I might be in a little bit of a tricky situation. Let me not sort of uh, hide from it. Let me acknowledge it and maybe bring on some help. Because I believe you spoke about that as well in the past, about sort of acknowledging your position and saying, you know what, we need a bit of help here or I need a bit of uh, sort of self-esteem building on this side or whatever it may be. How important is it to sort of have that vulnerability in the business world? I think there's two answers to this question. On one hand, I think being vulnerable online when it pertains to your personal brand, for example, is both a superpower and something that could just end everything. Like, you know, we've all seen the crying CEO. We've all seen those posts on LinkedIn of, you know, CEOs like saying, woe is me. And like, let's be real, business is hard. Like CEOs are required to put a smile on their face, even if their wife's divorcing them, their kids hate them, you know, their mental health sucks. No one's coming to save you. Like you have to save everyone else. And that's a lesson I've had to learn the hard way over the last 18 months is I've had a shit show of a personal life, but I've, and that's crept into my business. I've been very honest about that. Um, but that's been the detriment of my business. You know, you kind of have to be able to put on a tough face and like you are the leader at the end of the day. But at the same time, creating a space for your team to know that actually you are a human being and you're not just a robot and you're not just someone who is constantly happy and does have like actual shit happening in their life can also be a superpower because it gives them then the tools to know that it's okay to talk about those things and be open and honest and create a channel of communication between yourself and your team. As it pertains to you bettering yourself, if you're not self-aware enough to know that the things that are going on in your life, both personally and professionally, are going to impact your ability to perform, you will never succeed. And I think you have to have, I call it wandering time. Like where, and for me, it's in the sauna. Like hopefully when there's no one there, but quite often I'm at David Lloyd's, quite often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, and you know what, it's like, if anyone <laughs> the DL crew knows that everyone loves to chat in the sauna. Um, but I like that time because it means that I can think and there's, I'm no one's mum, I'm no one's boss, I'm just, I can just think. 
And I think it's really important to have that thinking time to almost do like a self audit of where are my weaknesses right now? Like, what am I not doing enough of that critical thinking time of like, where are the problems arising from? And what is my contribution to those problems? And so a huge thing that I've been working on at the minute is, you know, looking at the problems within the business and I'm the bottleneck to most of it. And so how can I unpick that and empower the team to be able to solve those problems themselves almost using me as a sounding board as opposed to a decision maker and so that's something I've been working really hard on and that's you know that's empathy that's compassion that's mentor versus boss that's all of those things but I would never have come to that conclusion had I not had that thinking time and I think it's really important as much as everyone says and I got hammered for this on on Instagram recently I said I have four hours a week when my team know they can't talk to me because and it's really important for me that I have those four sessions in the gym every single week so that I can think because when I come out of those sessions, I have I have cleared my mind. I haven't thought about anything other than that workout. Yeah. And that gives me clarity, which means I can better help them. And I think that's really, really important that everyone acknowledges that you can't be an amazing, successful business person, career person, mother, father, husband, wife, unless you're also looking after yourself. And self-care doesn't just mean having a bubble bath and pouring yourself a glass of wine or whatever self-care actually can also mean where are your weaknesses and where can you improve and taking that time for yourself, whether it be in the gym, the sauna, the spa, the walk, the whatever, it could be completely free. But where are you taking that time to identify where you could be improving? Because I don't know about you, but I always know when I've stopped learning, when I start to feel stagnant and I start to feel like I'm in this, floaty state of like fuck where are my goals I don't know where I'm going you almost lose your direction and I know it, I feel it in my soul when that happens and I'm like cool I need to start learning something then because then when you start learning it almost like redirects you back onto that path of like cool well I remember my goal now and I can keep going and it's really important that you as a leader of a business continues your self-development alongside your team because I think we put a lot of onus on you need to develop people you need to develop people but how are you developing yourself like are you reading you're listening to podcasts are you wondering what are you doing and I think that's really important. Last couple, because I know we're short on time. My show is called If Only They Knew. What's one thing either you wish you knew at an earlier stage in your journey to sort of help you propel um, a lot faster? Or is there any, or is there anything you wish you could know now that would get you to that next level of whatever that is on your vision board, perhaps? What, what's that one thing you wish you knew now or one thing you wish you would have known back in the day to speed things up? I don't know. I think this answers both of your questions. Mm -hmm. And it is that everything works out. Doesn't matter what you do, yeah. everything works out. And the power of that for me has been game changing. Like, even if you take it all the way down to like dating, right? If you knew that you were going to meet the love of your life, what would you do? If you knew that you were going to get married and have children, have a family, it was going to be wonderful. What would you do? Would you really be stressed about whether or not that person texts you back? Would you really be stressed about whether or not that? No, you wouldn't care because you know that it's going to work out. It's the same as your business. If you knew that your business was going to be really successful, if you knew you were going to get everything that you ever wanted, albeit maybe in, a, in perhaps not as quickly as you'd like, but you knew it was going to happen, what would you do? I look back on my vision board from three years ago and I've achieved every single thing I put on that vision board. I have a um, this book, actually, I highly recommend it for anyone. It, it seems really woo woo, but it's not called The Manifestation Journal. Every single. So I wrote this five years ago. I keep I have one every year and I keep all of them because I like looking back at them. Every single goal I put in here five years ago, I've achieved every wow. single one. So and that's not because I'm some special person. It's because I knew it was going to work out. If I knew if I took the right steps, I did the right actions and I kept moving forward, it was going to work out. So if I only knew <laughs> back then, but also now to remind myself, everything works out. Everything. Perfect. Well, I mean, what a positive way to end. Like I said, we're short on time, but I think that's a perfect positive way to, to put the stamp on the conversation. I really appreciate your time. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you achieve even more on your next vision board and we'll see what happens thank you so much ted i really appreciate the opportunity